oh, I know I'm going to get my black card revoked. But it is what it is. I'm not a fan. Um, I don't know what to tell you. And quite frankly, I don't like it. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Men the Podcast. I'm your co-host Jordan Flowers here with my boy Hale, and we are here on a special day, Juneteenth. We want to express um, a happy Juneteenth to all that observe. Shout out to all our Black people out there, in which we are commemorating um, the day that the last African Americans were notified that they have, that they have been freed from slavery. So, such a wonderful time for us. I mean, obviously, with our stored here history of, of slavery and the atrocities that you know were were done upon us for four hundred plus years, and to now be able to celebrate in a which where you know all these years removed, but in a way where we also. Um, remember all of our ancestors that came before us that endure all those things and to be able to celebrate our blackness. So we have a really, really special episode for us and I'm gonna let hell kick it off for us. Yes. And the first thing I would say is that uh, I do not have Juneteenth off. So just want to <laughs> put that out there into the world. Just that to is let crazy. people know that uh, I do not have Juneteenth off. No, I don't. Uh, and I did not want to take the PTO for it. So here I am. Here we go. It's all good. It's all good. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, but uh, Juneteenth, you know, it's it's special, but it's also something that's very new to all of us. So we still don't quite know what to think of it, how to perceive it and everything. Obviously, if you know your history, you know the importance and Jordan just went over it. But um, it doesn't have the duration like a. 4th of July and such, or like a Christmas to where you can anticipate it coming up. You have certain activities planned and things like that. Cause it, it's new. It just started, I believe like two years ago, two, three years ago. Whoa, uh, whoa, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Think- it's been, it's been a while. It's been a while. Not for a federal holiday. It's, it's been a new federal holiday, but Juneteenth was going on for a while, bro, for celebrations. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're right. You're right. <laughs> that's why you're here of course but um <laughs> absolutely uh for this episode i do want to take some time to reflect a little bit on uh you know black americans as a whole you, the good mm-hmm. the bad and just have a honest conversation of you know, kind of just where do we go from here what, what can we see what's our outlook going into the future and to start off our first question uh it's definitely something that's been discussed with the new generation coming up it's the sense of what is the black culture what is our identity how how do we coexist into society and into the world and such right and upon thinking about that you know you hear a lot about how they're saying that what whatever we consider as black culture has been declining for a while uh, for and everyone has their reasons why, what it is, and who's causing it, and everything like that. But I do want to take the time and uh, ask you the question of yourself: uh, What do, you, if you think, you know, whether yes or no, if you believe uh, the black culture is declining, but also, what do you think are some components for people to think that black culture is taking a decline nowadays? Oh man, that's a that's a charged question. Um. First and foremost, I think um, and it, it kind of parallels to some of the things that I'm talking about currently in class and I won't get into. But um, I think the thing of it is, is that there's two competing, not two competing ideologies, but the existence of what the way American society is set up is that you got the American culture and, you know, the the individualized type of thing that we kind of push upon people uh, within American culture and which runs exactly opposite from the black culture, which is more about being communal, being around people, being fellowship, you know, the experience of, you know, uplifting one another and being around one another, which is a human thing, but really a black thing, um, particularly in America, just because again, coming from slavery, that's kind of our DNA of having to uprise and to lean on one another to see ourselves um, be elevated um, in certain spaces. So I think there's a Um, I think the thing of it is, is that I think American culture kind of pushes for people to be just much more individualized. Um, This individualism, capitalistic type of ideology um, is kind of ingrained. I think it's innate. It's not really 
something that people think about because it's been going on for so long, but I think it's becoming more and more ingrained by generations. Um, I think within black culture, I think there is tough because I think when you think of culture, you think of um, you think of music, you think of hairstyles, you think of ways of living and all those other things. And I think from that perspective, particularly when it comes to music, I think there is a kind of a different like idea of how we're starting to express ourselves. And I think, it again, people aren't really used to that, if that if that makes sense. So um just i'm not to you know i'm a big trap you know trap and you know hardcore drill music like i I love that type of music but i understand how that ingrains into the different cultures and to understand that people don't like that because that's what is being projected to the world and that's what people are thinking outside if you're not a black person within the community and so i could see how people want to push back on that like why are we talking about these guns killings drugs all that stuff I'm, i'm of that proponent but i just appreciate it as an art rather than, you know, a lifestyle. But I understand people do that as a lifestyle and I've been around that. So I think just, um, I think the thing of it is, is that we have to reassess as a community and what the components is, is just the competing ideology of individualism. And I think just the lack of exploration, this is my main point, is that we're not encouraging for one, there's a multitude of reasons and I won't get into it now, but there's a multitude of reasons of why we're not encouraging people to explore their blackness in, in, in more detail, their roots, um, their neighborhoods. It doesn't even have to go so far back and to appreciate those things. So the more we get away from community, because as we grew up, community was a huge thing at the block parties and all those other things like those were a staple. And now with the new world is we've gotten away from those things. So I think there's just a shifting component. And I think that the black pride that's, you know, within the communal spaces has degraded to just celebrations within just holidays like this, rather than it just being a common occurrence that we saw when we were growing up. And again, there's a a multitude of reasons that we can get in. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, before I get into my point, definitely encourage the viewer, anyone watching this, you know, comment down below your thoughts. Again, this is supposed to be an open platform, a community building, um, <clears throat> sorry, a community building channel. So definitely want to hear your opinion, what you see. You know, we can only speak from our perspective, but who knows uh, what lives people have lived and what they can share to help other people out. So definitely let us know what you think about this topic and put your two cents into it for sure. Uh, what I would say is, um, you can argue it both ways, but we'll just speak on the decline on like what people are, what I interpret people are seeing, right? I mm-hmm. don't think it's a decline as in the culture of a whole. I think it's a decline of what part of the culture we're showcasing. That's why I think it, and it has to do with social media, of course. So the big thing me and you talk about privately when we're talking about growing a channel and stuff. And uh, my points are like, hey, you know, negativity sells. And a crazy, very out of pocket, very extreme thinking person is going to get more views than someone who's level headed. That's just how the algorithm's going to work for you. More people are going to comment, more people are going to have something to say. It's going to get bigger, right? And right. I think to a degree, that's kind of what yeah, and, and to bring it full circle, I think that's kind of what you see with the culture is that the things that people see on social media of the culture are always going to be negative based, always going to be extreme, always going to idolize a lower income status. When in reality, as a culture, there's a, there's a separation of class. And that's not a bad thing. It just has to do with socioeconomics, right? So the one thing that me and Jordan like to joke around joke about in a while, you know, here and there and stuff is you know, how I talk, right? Because mm-hmm. I talk very properly, but part of the reason I talk proper is, you know, I grew up in a suburb of Chicago and I was fortunate for the school system and everything that I have, you know, not to say that I couldn't code switch, but I do it way less than you would say other people would do it, right? So right. in saying that though, um, that's where I think the decline is, is that there's not a big distinguish of class on social media. So then a lot of people just assume black culture is only going towards one way. 
right? So the very right. rich people you see on social media act just like the very poor people that you see on social media. And that creates a lot of confusion on what the culture is and what we're about and everything like that. But I do want to make it a point within Black culture, there's just as much good as what you would consider as bad in the culture, just like any other culture. Just because it's not being shown on social media doesn't mean it's not happening, right? Mm -hmm. Like one big thing that's never getting shown on social media is the economics of Black Americans and how we're thriving, how there's whole communities, how there's Black businessmen, Black philosophers, Black scientists doing groundbreaking work, Black engineers, all of that clubs for it, everything right but it just doesn't get showcased so it's hard for people to actually see and hear that things like that are actually going on unless you're in that lifestyle you're around these types of people right so that would be my point if there is a decline that's where i see the decline of is the showing of the other side of black culture on social media has been lacking for sure I think you're you're on the I mean, that's the the biggest thing. And I'll be quick with this so we can move along with the with the, the, the episode. But in saying that, though, like there is, like you said, negativity sales. And and the thing of it is, is that there's a lot of great things that are going on within the black culture. Um, I know there's always a meme floating around there about how when somebody get the job, they, they get like three likes and then they portray something that's negative and they got a whole bunch of comments and all that type of stuff. And I get it from a psychological aspect of why people are attracted to these things and the conditioning that we have been exposed to within this country, not to get into the ins and outs of that, but just saying I, I, I can get why. But in saying that, though, there is a, a bunch of things, even within my community, there's so many great things that's going on. And then you'll touch on that. Right. Like we'll highlight that for a second. And then guess what? Like the next day we off of it and not not knowing that these things take. Not only are these people working against the grain because there's a lot of negativity going on, but like it's taking years to build these positive things. And then we get like a three minute segment of something positive that's taken five years to accomplish. And then people just totally forget about it. And now we on to whatever the next thing again, that negative negativity that's going to sell um, to get us the rating. So that that's important for us to keep pushing the, the you know, moving the needle and to make sure that positivity is starting to sell just on the same rate but this is kind of the reality where we are and we kind of have to deal with the reality while also working on the ways of combating those things as well and as we talk about social media and technology as a whole it's not going to get simpler it's only going to get more complicated especially with the advancements of ai and uh, when we talk about black culture and um everything of the sort, you you also have to dive more into the newer generation, the next generation. You know, what, what are we going to teach the next generation? How are they going to be equipped uh, and be able to pursue the success that we've had as a culture and what we can t continue to have moving forward, right? And for the new generation, I mean, it's it's hard. It's hard with everything that's going on now like I personally now I'm very biased because I'm in my early 20s. We all are. <laughs> so I'm very biased. But I think there's a lot of very unique situations going on in our generation that no other generation has had to deal with. I'm sure all the other generations would argue that, too. But I'm talking about me and this is about the young people. So we're talking. That's what we got. Um, right. And saying that, though, what do you what do you believe are some advantages uh, for the younger generation here and how do we take all of this stuff coming in and what we're hit with and stuff and where's the positivity in this? How, how do we do this? How do we use this to our advantage in any way? I'm glad you're highlighting two things. One, um, the thing of it is, is that I'm, I'm glad we're starting to become that unk age, even though we don't want to talk about it. We still in our young 20s. All right, so I'm not going to say we ain't saying we ain't unk age No, yet. no, no, no. I don't understand. No, I don't understand that at all. That doesn't make any sense. Guys, no, we I creeping, I am 25 bro. years old. We creeping. No one's calling we are, me unk. We are creeping no, up there. No one's we are calling creeping me unk, up man. That, bro, look, we, are, we creeping up there, brother. We keep, But in all actuality, um, we are starting to get old, right? Uh, I know we don't want to think that, but we are. 
Um, but the thing of it is with this next generation um, in particular is that I'm glad that we are talking about the next, you know, the they have a lot of hardships that we didn't even have to deal with correctly. And, you know, the thing of it is, it's, it's easy for us to just sit here and say they got it easier because they have more access or they didn't have to do all these things. But that lays in contrast to the things that we didn't have to face while they're growing up. You know what I'm saying? One of the things that we talk about on this time, you know, all the time on this platform is social media. You got to think Instagram and all that stuff didn't come around till we were 11. We had a fully formed identity to the to a greater extent. Um, everything was, again, going back to being more, much more communal. But um, the thing with this in terms of the advantages is I think particularly starting with our generation, but I think it trickles down to their generation is that this generation that's um, under us. Um, I don't know their generation. What is what is the gen? You know what the, the generation is called? I don't know what it's called. Yeah. You know what it's called? So we're we're Gen X and then they're yeah, Gen Alpha. OK, Gen Alpha. That's the first time I heard that, man. That, wow. <laughs> the more you know. The more you know, but I think the thing with them is that, and I commend them for this, is that I think they challenge and they're very, very curious about things. Like they don't just, you know, take the status quo and just run with it. Whatever they're told, they're not going to just, ah, that's what it is, what it is type of mentality. And they question things. And I think they're becoming more emboldened just by the things that we're setting up for our generation to, to stand up to things that they don't believe in. To um, push back on things that they are see are holding us back, not only as uh, people, but on the individual side as well, and to wake themselves up to some of the systemic racism and the, the oppression that we still deal with to this day. And so I think the advantages is, is that they have a generation in us that are that ushered in the the best of both worlds of taking from the older generation, but also being young enough to experience this thing. But I think with them, with the access to information, like you can't just lie to them. You, you know, these things are, you know, a lot more easily accessible to sit here and say, you can't just say something and I'm supposed to believe and I can go look it up. And that's not the truth. And they are willing to invest time in pushing back against them. So I think the biggest advantage for them is to use their voices. I think you see people even as young as 13, 14, like people are standing up. They sound like civil rights leaders. Some of these people that's speaking at these ages and I commend them because that's what it's going to take. And we need to applaud these people in much more higher regard for them taking an interest in these things that, uh, again, that are have been continuing to hold us back as black people. But I, I think with all the disadvantages that they have, they have the, the advantage of us to continue to speak life in them. And again, for them just to continue to embolden them to use their voices and their platforms for the betterment of us as a people. Absolutely. Uh, I would like to break my thoughts into three parts here, uh, similar to what you said, but probably indulge a little bit more into it. First thing, what you were talking about with uh, technology and um, one good thing about technology is how fast information is able to travel, how fast you can communicate, how fast you can unionize. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, you're your great friend, uh, Sharita, which shout out to Sharita, go follow Change yeah. Omaha. She's doing great things over there. Great. Things. Uh, but even on her, uh, on her episode, she even mentioned like, Hey, we had an issue and we got in contact with a similar group in Chicago and they were able to give us some good guidance and mentorship on like how to navigate through that stuff. So the ability to communicate in that realm and that fast to solve very major problems is such an asset for our generation as a whole to be able to do. And then moving on with the technology, that's gonna gain knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. So like you said, how the 14 year olds now are sounding like civil rights activists, the ability to absorb knowledge and to receive knowledge at the rate that we're receiving is something that no generation has ever seen before. I mean, we don't, mm -hmm. like, it's gotten to the point where books are becoming obsolete. Like as crazy as it sounds, because anything that you think you'll learn from a book, you can learn in a 20 minute YouTube video. It's it's right. incredible. And it's breaking a lot of barriers down that people like people don't like. Obviously, with all this knowledge, there's the age of misinformation and all of that stuff. And I do encourage with anything, don't take everything as face value, especially on TikTok. Make sure you do some background work. 
and actually look at a book or look at a few articles. Just make sure that you're actually receiving accurate information, right? right. Um, but with all that being said, you know, the amount of information that we are receiving here and what we can do with it at such an early age is such an asset. Things that would take people 40 years to learn, we can learn in under a year and then actually apply that knowledge into something. So I think that's great. I think it's a great thing for humanity, for pushing us forward and exponentially grow and change. And that's one thing to add on. That's one thing I think that we forget uh, when it comes to change and when we look into the past and stuff, is that it always seemed like a lot of stuff took a very long time. Like the, the civil rights movement, that was decades in the making. And then the entire timeline of it was what, about eight years, I believe, somewhere around, maybe 10, maybe mm -hmm. even longer, but you know, core of it all, probably around eight to 10 years. You know, nowadays, a timeline like that would be significantly faster just because you're able to communicate so much faster, organize so much faster, you can receive and understand information so much faster and how it's getting to you and everything like that. So we do have to realize that that this is a privilege to have mm -hmm. and other generations didn't have that privilege is why it took so much longer for them to achieve and to get to a certain progress mark. And then the third thing is uh, wealth and the ability to obtain wealth, you know, back Back when my father and my grandfather were growing up, your wealth was working 40 years at a corporation and getting the pension at, at the end of the road, right? And mm -hmm. nowadays, I mean, I've seen insane what like money, money's everywhere. <laughs> I would say yeah. like that. Money's everywhere. I've seen people make way more money than me doing way more easier things than what my job is and what I have to do. So uh, I need to figure it out for sure. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that the ability to obtain wealth and what it's done to us as a community is definitely a benefit. There's plenty of people our age that look back and it's like, I'm making way more money in my 20s than what my parents made raising three kids, raising like four kids and things like that. So. Uh, with that, there's the hope that we use our money for good and not mm -hmm. good as in you're supposed to just give it all to charity. I don't exactly believe in all that. I do believe you should enjoy some of your money. I, what right. I mean by good is in building the foundation to where uh, your offspring and then, of course, if you make a lot of money, the next generation can benefit off of the progress that you were able to make. Yeah, and I think um, just quickly, um, the thing that you speak about is, again, just, again, teaching ourselves uh, about, you know, we've been denied these things for so long. Um, we can go redlining. We can go, um, you know, just not the equal, you know, the equity or, you know, the pay wage gap. And obviously with inflation and all of those things, we're still, you know, having to combat those things, even with the rising cost of things and we're still getting, you know, getting more money as it, as it comes. But, you know, particularly for us, I think we have a lot more leverage, um, in today's, um, generation. Um, again, I think we, we've been brought a lot of things to the table as a people for years. But again, I think at this point in time, you're not able to deny us as equally and give us BS reasons as to why you're not, you know, paying us on the same weight or, you know what I'm saying? And again, going back to social media, like, there's a pressure there too. Like if you're being mistreated or things like that, like I can easily go to social media, like, Hey, this is what's happening at so-and-so. And you know what the biggest thing about corporations is what protect the bottom line. And if this is undermining the bottom line, this person that's you know, bringing something, you know, a just cause to a social platform, they have to now renegotiate and go to the table. Like, damn, we got to do the right thing. Let's call it spade a spade. That's kind of how corporations work. And so I think going back to that, I think we have a lot more le leverage in this generation. We have brought a lot to the table. And now people can't blatantly, these corporations and all these these people that have been able to do so, do it in a, such an overt or covert way without being called out on it. And I think that puts a lot of pressure on them to not undermine their, their, their bottom line. And it works in our favor. Now we can just get people to just do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. That's the kind of the next step.
Yeah, absolutely. And and talking about uh, people doing the right thing, uh, let's talk about Juneteenth as a as a day here and as a holiday. You know, I'm I definitely learned through my spiel earlier this episode that there are legitimate traditions that have been going on way before this is a federal holiday. So, in the spirit of things, what are some traditions that you think should be cemented cemented in as a Juneteenth thing to do? And then what are some things that aren't typically tradition right now that you believe that we should add to this as as our as is now being a federal holiday? That's a good question. Um, I think the the one thing that I appreciate, and this is a big thing um, where I come, you know, come back home and, and North Omaha is obviously you've been there. I, t- I took you up there and, you know, it's a huge population of black people in North Omaha. And they um, the, the they just had the Juneteenth parade over the weekend, which had a big it's always every year is a big turnout. My mom was actually in it, man. I probably throw some pictures in here and stuff. So she was really excited about that. And um, but I think having those parades um, and again, going back to my earlier statement about being communal, those parades, those festivals, those coming together, that's the root of black people is celebration of who we are in our history. And so, I mean, I think there's every, every pretty big, I know DC out here had a, a huge one. Again, going back to any major city, I think you have those parades. So I think, again, for us, I think just showing up for per se um is a really big thing we go all out for christmas we go all out for these things which i'm all for you know what i'm saying but to not go all out for our people um i think that's something we should reassess as a people um is to participate in those things um that you know and to show pride and and who we are so i think the praise the festivals to get together anything that brings black people together with you know good drinks good music drink responsibly 21 plus of course but, you know, all those things that bring people together um, to where we're able to network and just feel one another's love. I think that's the essence of black people is showing each other love. And in terms of a tradition, I would love for us to kind of adopt is just better education about what Juneteenth is and the history of our people. Again, going back to the exploration of our roots, I think a lot of people kind of know the surface level things. So I think, again, encouraging exploration, encouraging what Juneteenth is, what are the things that happen to us? So, you know, and obviously that's a that's a it's, a it's a lot of emotions charged with that because you have to touch back to roots that, you know, um, were not pleasant for us um, and they, they did not do right by us. But in saying that, though, it's the essence of who we are and we can't run from that and the resilience that we were able to build. from those. So I just think better education about um, for our for, our, you know, and obviously making an engaging for the youth, because obviously like me just telling you what Juneteenth is it might not be the most engaging at six and five years old. You know, make it engaging. Do these things that engage the youth to have pride in being black and to know what their blackness means and to then encourage them to establish what black means for them. You know, not just what I tell you what black people or what it's like to be a black person, but what does it mean to be a black person to you? You know what I'm saying? So that they able to solidify that identity for themselves. So I just hope that we keep encouraging these young people to not just be just individuals, but to to have pride in being a part of the community that's continuing to to see ascension over you know the span of generations to come. Yeah, I think you covered pretty much everything that needs to be said uh, on what we should do for sure. Uh, if I could put some two cents into, into that, I definitely agree on the community part festivals. Absolutely. I think that's an amazing thing that we should do. Uh, And anytime you do something to bring a community together, it's always going to be a positive, I believe. So I definitely, I definitely agree with that. I'm going to do my best Jordan Flowers impression here, but I definitely want to double and triple down on history. 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 All right. Yes. <laughs> Got to know your history. All right. And and part of knowing the history um, is the application of history. And I, that's what I'm big on. There's a lot of people that regurgitate a lot of history, but there has to be some type of applying. Like, now that I know this information, what am I going to do with it? Right. And mm-hmm. I think one thing I want to challenge everyone listening to this and then as a whole, when we look at Juneteenth and we start to learn about our history and everything of that nature. 
One, it's a good time of reflection. I think that's very important. Maybe even grieving. I mean, again, my grandfather was of my age around the civil rights movement, somewhere in that range, right? So the scars uh, of generations, there's definitely, you definitely need to have that. But another thing, I it should be a sign of encouragement too, to say, look at everything we've been through as a group of people and look at where we are now and what we can do. So when we talk about giving people history perspectives and everything like that. I don't want it to be something to where we look back at history and now we're all sad and now the music stops playing and now we're just sitting quietly like we're sitting at a funeral or something like that. I want it to be a sign of encouragement to motivate the people of the next generation to, again, no matter what happens, we are a very strong group of people. We are resilient. We can do anything and everything we would want to do if we work together, of course. So I, I very hard when it comes to learning the history to also push the narrative in that perspective to say like, um, not that everything's a positive, but in retrospect, make it a positive, right? Take all this information and make it a better world, a better society for yourself and for everyone around you. Absolutely. And before we wrap up, cause I know we got time constraints, Got a quick hitter for you, dog. I need three black food items that is a must at a black event. Go. I need it. What you got? Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, 100%. Uh, Mac and cheese, one of the greatest food dishes ever made, known to man. Okay. Mac and cheese. Uh, I mean, you're going to have to do fried chicken. Even though you can okay. do that for anything, you'll have to do fried chicken. I, it'd be ridiculous not to. This okay. one's tough. Uh, I'm a bigger guy. I'm not that into vegetables like that. So <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of rap for not putting greens in on this. But I, I'm i putting in yams. I'm, I'm throwing okay. yams in there. I think, okay. listen, a good dish of yams. It's got to be number two. Only, only to mac and cheese. No one's beating that. But... Yams, especially, it's so underrated. Not enough people talk about yams. Everyone wants to talk about the greens and the cornbread and all that stuff. A good plate of yams goes crazy. So that's my third. Have you had yams with uh, marshmallows in them before? I don't know if you've ever seen that. Uh, I have and I haven't. I have and I haven't. Okay. Uh, what I would say is good yams are good yams. So if people know how to make it with marshmallows, it's going to taste really good. People don't still going to taste really good. I don't think it's a necessity, but I've seen people make it and it's insane. So I like <laughs> that. I like that's a, that's a solid list, man. All right. My three. All right. I'm, I'm truth telling today. As people know, I'm the pickiest eater. If you haven't figured it out now, you know, <laughs> you know, now I'm the, well, Trey is the pickiest eater, but I'm about second. Trey is way worse than me, but uh, okay. I'm going to go with, again, staples, mac and cheese, dog. Gotta have mac and cheese. And you gotta have mac and cheese with the crust on it. If it don't got a crust on it, dog, we out. I'm out. And it, the yes. that's the be- that's the most important dish, dog. Who you gotta leave that up to one person that's very responsible. And they better not mess it up because the whole function is messed up without good mac and cheese. So mac and cheese with a crust on it. I'm gonna say no to collard greens. I hate collard greens. Oh, I know I'm gonna get my black card revoked, but it is what it is. I'm not a fan. Um, I don't know what to tell you. And quite frankly, I don't like fried chicken. So, haha, uh-huh. yeah, Jordan doesn't actually. What? Uh, what? Yeah, I'm, no, I really no, don't. no, no, no. I really don't. I mean, I'll eat it. Cream. It's over. It's over. We're done. <laughs> That's crazy. Can I get my two out? All right, we'll see you in the next. Can I get my two out? All right, all right, two out. All right, ready? Cool. Catfish. Oh, my. Got to have catfish. And you know, we are fans of catfish, dog. So, you got to have a catfish. I'm a substitute fried chicken for catfish. And then uh I'ma go with some ah oh man, either some red velvet cake for a dessert. Gotta have some red velvet cake. Or uh maybe some spaghetti. That would probably build my plate right there. Right there. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You over here mad at me. I'm I telling you wanna, what it is. Like, you want me to sit I, here? I just want to make sure you know. I just, I just want to make sure everyone knows on his plate, he has catfish, 
spaghetti, red velvet cake, and mac yeah. and cheese. Okay. And, okay, and I'm take by the way, if you bring in a tray of oh hold on. And by the oh, that's even worse. But if if you bring in a tray of fried chicken or a tray of collard greens, he's going to grab it and throw it straight into the trash, by the way. I want you to also wow. keep that in mind. You said you didn't like okay. collard greens anyway. Hold on. Didn't you just you got there saying it? That's crazy. That's crazy work. I said I, I'm I mean, not a big vegetable guy. So I would take yams over collard greens, but that doesn't mean like it wouldn't That's like I'm not crazy. throwing it away. Yeah, don't put no collard yeah, greens on my I, plate. No, dog. it's you're going crazy. To, and you know how you throw the plate upside listen, down when you throw it in the trash? Like, yeah, that's going to be me, dog, with your collard greens. I don't care how much time you put into them, bro. They're going straight in the trash, dog. But, uh, yeah, that's a good plate. Comment what your plate would be down below. I want to see the best plates. I don't know. We got to build a plate with three black items, and we're going to judge what black items. Yeah, it is very objective. Don't sit up here and say it's subjective. There's three items that you need to have for a black necessity. Comment them below. But, yeah. Take us away, dog. And I'm really disappointed in you, by the way. But we'll talk about that off air. I'm talking about yeah, I, you know, whatever. Chicken. Let's 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 land the plane here. Uh, I will say, if you have potato salad, bro, please please unsubscribe to us. Please unfollow if you put potato absolutely. Salad I'm gonna agree with you. I, I'm gonna agree with you on that. We, yeah, I'm gonna agree don't, with you. We don't like. We, please don't watch our channel. We don't want that. But anyway, uh, happy Juneteenth. Absolutely. Great episode here. Hopefully, we gave you guys some good perspectives here. And if we did, let us know what we miss. Let, let us know what we need to add here. And uh, of course, is there anything, uh, any closing marks you'd like to add here, Jordan? No, nah, I mean, the typical man, continue to, you know, follow, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. We have a lot of great things going on this summer. Um, we have a, a myriad of things that we're, you know, dipping into that you probably wouldn't have thought that we were getting into, or maybe we alluded to if you've been with us for a while that we're, you know, starting up finally. Um, so I'm really, really excited about that, um, to unveil some things and we got some really great guests even coming up that I'm really um, excited to, to show to our audience and we'll continue to move it forward, but we need your support to help us uh, move our, our platform forward and to get this community cracking as I would say. So yeah, that's all I got, man. Thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of Men the Podcast and we shall see y'all later. Oh.